Today is Pentecost, marking the arrival of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church. Jesus knew that after his death and resurrection and ascension, the disciples would be at a loss without him here on earth. And so for them and for all future believers, he promised to send the Spirit. The Holy Spirit showed up on Pentecost and shaped up a confused, scared bunch of disciples and made them into a fearless family of faith called the Church. It is the tradition at the Quincy Point Congregational Church to celebrate the Rite of Confirmation on Pentecost Sunday. These awesome young people have said yes and join this fearless family of faith. It's called the church. I'm thankful because we need them and they need us. I'd like to say out loud in front of everybody that they have really inspired me this year. You remember, with compassion and love in their hearts, they set out to collect 500 pairs of needed, dry, new, clean socks for the guests at Father Bill's and Main Street house shelters. I remember when they announced this big goal, 500 pairs of socks in two weeks, there was a gasp or two. I could hear the, oh, out in the congregation. <laughs> And uh, I understand there was even a chuckle or two also. They planned. They organized. They put their creative computer skills to work. They come up with a t-shirt. They came up with the motto, Socks for Souls. And they delivered over 750 pairs of socks for those who needed them. They inspired me. I, yes, yes. And they also wrote a beautiful statement of faith that we're all going to get to read in a minute. You all inspire me when you let the love of God direct your decisions and your words and your actions. Inspiration, by the way, has the same root word as spirit. Inspiration's all around us if we just open ourselves up to it when we let the love of God guide our words and our choices and our actions, inspiration just abounds. All right, one confession. I love to watch the Food Network. Ty Pennington has a new show with Amanda Freitag where he restores and renews diners that have seen better days. He puts forth the effort because these eating places are often at the heart of a community. Now, you might remember some years ago, Ty Pennington became a household name with the TV show Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Families sent in requests to the show needing home remodeling projects, and often these were families where they had experienced serious illness or tragedy, and they couldn't afford the repairs themselves. Amongst all the worthy requests that arrived one week was from an eight-year-old girl named Cassandra. And she didn't ask for anything for herself or her own family. Cassandra, this eight-year-old, wanted an extreme makeover for the dreary-looking children's cancer ward where she had been treated. She had been in the hospital a long time for chemotherapy, for bone marrow transplants. Her wish was to put color on the walls and liveliness and fun in those rooms where the parents and the children spent so much time. Now home from the hospital herself, Cassandra made bead necklaces to sell to make money for cancer research. Explaining the necklaces, this hopeful and compassionate eight-year-old said, 
The pink bead, you see the pink bead? The pink bead stands for love. And the pink bead I always put on first because love comes first. The pink bead goes on first because love always comes first. What a faith statement. The child got it. Love always comes first. She was an inspiration to those who met her, not just because she endured suffering with grace, but for the hope and kindness she generated all around her. She put it into action. Love always comes first. Eight-year-old Cassandra was an inspiration to me because of her acts of love and compassion. Her hopeful imagination took her beyond her own distress past that to envision an environment of color and liveliness and fun for those who are going through treatments like she did. Now, today's scripture lesson encourages us to trust in God's promises and look beyond our present difficulties, our present circumstances, to a time when hope will rule the day. The text comes from Jeremiah. God says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future and a hope. These promising words, these welcome words, came originally to a group of dispirited people, discouraged people from Israel who had been defeated and forced to live in exile in Babylon. They missed their home. Just when they seemed to have reached a dead end, when life as they knew it was over and done, these words about God's intentions for them gave them something to hold on to, something to believe in, something to hope for. For I know the plans I have for you plans to give you a hope and a future. You will call upon me. I will hear you when you seek me with all your heart. You will find me. They hadn't been forgotten. They hadn't been abandoned. They knew things were going to change because God has plans. God's plans can redirect all the gifts and talents we have been given to accomplish something good and meaningful and inspiring in this world. All lives created by God have a purpose. All churches gathered by God have a mission. So, eat your Wheaties or your granola or your Egg McMuffin, and fasten your seatbelts because God has plans for you. God's plans can redirect the gifts and the talents you have been given to accomplish something good and beautiful and caring and wondrous in this world. God has plans for you, and God has plans for all of us. So to our confirmants, welcome to this fearless family of faith called the Quincy Point Congregational Church. Amen. And now I'd like you to open your bulletins and find it's on the insert with the photographs, and it's a white page, and it's a statement of faith. And uh, it's really an honor to read this with our confirmants for all of us to read this. The phrases and the sentences were written by the students and their mentors. So please join me. We believe in God who creates all, from the huge universe to the smallest particle, from large magnificent whales to microscopic bacteria. We experience the wonders of God's creation the smell of freshly cut grass, salty ocean air at the beach, and food at the baseball game. 
the sights and sounds of white rolling clouds, crashing waves, blazing sun, and glistening stars twinkling white, yellow, red, and blue. The awesome earth, round, blue, and brown. God created amazing animals, from the fluorescent salamander to the fastest, ferocious cheetah and the slowest, calm turtle and the mice under my house. And God created us and all people, all different and all loved by God. We believe God gave us Jesus Christ to save us and to guide us. The Lord died for us and arose beautifully. He gave us the sacred meal of bread and cup to remember him always. The Holy Spirit expects us to persevere and gives us a safety line. We believe the Holy Spirit is with us and roams among us now and forevermore. Amen and amen.